Following on from my previous Amiga video, I remembered that later issues of Amiga format also included source code from Bullfrog software. So let's try getting that assembling and see what we can find. So yes, if you like these kind of technical deep dive videos, then please do consider liking or subscribing to this channel or sending me a super thanks. They are all always very much appreciated. I'll be putting all of the links to all of these magazine scans and also the cover disc disc images so you can download them yourself. But I remember when I was trying to learn how to program the Amiga, I found these articles really useful and the example source code really useful as well. At this point, uh, I had a full version of DevPack, if I remember correctly, and this really helped assemble up all of these pieces of example source code as well. On Amiga format cover disc uh, 40, uh, the B cover disc, the second one, I remember that they were including these LHA files, the bull2 LHA file and uh, the bull data LHA file. Um, that's because this this cover disc was extremely, well, these cover discs in this issue were extremely full already. So they created this like self-extracting thing. We're not going to self-extract them. I'm going to use the LHA command directly to extract the contents of the files to RAM. Oh yeah, let's get the command line parameters correct. It's meant to be A and then dash E. No, dash A and then E, right. Uh, it's relatively quick. But don't forget that this emulator has the CPU speed increased and also the disk access speed increased as well. On an Unreal, on an Unreal Amiga, <laughs> it's going to be a little bit slower, if I recall. Using directory opus to create a bullfrog's target directory on, on the target hard drive there and then copy all of these files from uh, the RAM disk to the newly created bullfrogs directory. This will not take that long. Let's just do copy. Boink, 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 boink. Now we can go to devpack assembler and then try and assemble these particular versions of files that are on the cover disk. Not monam, it's um, gen m2, isn't it? There we go. Load the file from the correct directory, bullfrogs directory. There we are. And um, it was the uh, demo.s file, right? Where is it? Did I just, it wasn't main. No, nope, it was demo.s. Oh, why didn't I see that first time around? That's just, this file includes all of the other source files you see, and all, also the uh, include files. So let's just assemble to memory, see what we get. Hmm. Oh yeah, I forgot to put these um, data files in the data directory. So we can go back to directory opus and we can put those in the right place. That's not an issue. So there's the target data directory in the bullfrog, bullfrogs directory on the hard drive. And then we're just going to copy these files into there. Man, pal, and uh, that was it, right? for this first demo disk. Ah, uh, yeah, the block data, that's right. Copy, and then quit. And then let's go back to devpack. And then let's do assemble to memory again, pass one, pass two. So the great thing about the bullfrog example source code is that actually it's a lot easier to assemble. Uh, as long as the files are in the right place, actually it assembles cleanly first try, which is great. Look, and you can run this little sprite around and pretty much nothing else. In the initial uh, source code bundle anyway, there are 
other disks though. So we can get the next disk in the series. And on cover disk 41, B. Uh, this time, once it pops up, we can browse the files with directory opus, if I remember correctly. And there's already an extracted bullfrogs directory, which is great for us. We don't need to mess around with LHA. We can just do copy. And that's what we'll do, and we'll replace it. It's going through and thinking. You can see the status update in the top of the window there. It's showing which file and which path is being copied. And there we go. So we have all of the stuff that we need. Let's just quit that. Let's go back to DevPack. Let's load the relevant file again. There it is. Nope, I scrolled too far. There we are. Okay. Like before, just assemble it to memory. Pass one, pass two, clean assembly passes. Fantastic, right? It's always nice. Now, the thing is, is that the movement has changed and you can see if I jump up here now, it seems to be jumping up onto something and then the platform is not there. And that's because if you actually read what's in the magazine, you need to uncomment this line. And that's in draw.s. So let's go to draw.s and uncomment it. Remove the semicolon basically. Scroll down. That's the draw blocks routine. There we are. Let's remove the semicolon. I wonder how many people were actually going to read that particular part in the magazine. It's not very well highlighted. OK, it's on the page and it's in one of the earlier paragraphs, but still. Let's load demo.s back again to assemble to memory. I'm pressing Amiga and A there instead of going to the, the menu option. It's just simpler. You can also do run with Amiga and X. There we go. Now we've got some platforms. Now it's a little bit difficult to control, as you can see, but the collision detection with the platform drawing in the background is, you know, pretty, pretty okay. It's it's functional. Let's put it like that. And it, I, these these uh, pieces of example source code with the example data um, are for teaching purposes, right? That's the important aspect. They have to be understandable. And if I recall from many, many, many years ago, well, 30 years ago, isn't it? Um, it was pretty understandable. 34 years ago. Oh my gosh. Let's add the example source code from the other two disks now. So the other two disks uh, are documented up to this point in the in the magazine. We'll turn part five. So that's what we'll be doing. So we'll whiz over this a little bit quicker than before. We don't need to see a whole bunch of extracting stuff right, and copying. And the other disk. So what I'm doing is that I'm just updating the files one after each other from the from the distribution disks. I don't think you really have to do it, but I just wanted to get all of the files all in one place and include all of their incremental updates. Finally, just copy what's in the RAM disk to the hard drive relevant folder. There we go. And the other one too, because the directories were named differently. Really annoying, but okay. And there we go, just collated everything together. Now back to DevPack. Open up the 
all of the latest collated version of the source code. There's a whole bunch of extra files in here now, which is nice. Let's open demo.s. We can see now that there's some extra include files for the extra sources in it, intro and game over. Uh, promising, right? Uh, pt-play as well. So let's do this. Let's go and assemble it to memory. Everything seems to be assembling well. It takes a little bit longer now, doesn't it? Because there's a whole bunch of extra source and data to get through. Cross assembly or cross platform assembly tools would be a lot, lot quicker, you know. Anyway, this is rather cool, isn't it? We've got a nice little animating intro. We've got a lovely uh, image in the backdrop. We've got sprites over the top. Um, we've got kind of like enemy humanoid characters, but without their heads running around. We can jump up the platforms. They don't seem to have heads, right? They seem, their heads seem to be locked up at the neck. I have no idea why. Anyway, we can jump around, collect these Unk symbols or whatever they are, and then get to the next level. So the uh, score increases as well. Um, this was a really good demo, but an example game from source code. And it assembles a lot cleaner than the, uh, the Menace demo source code did. Let's put it like that. Um, it was, it, I think, you know, in my opinion, I think it was a better structured example source code, um, which helped when learning the idiosyncrasies of Amiga software dev. Boink. There we go, game over. It's got some nice music playing along in the background as well. Uh, I think there's a little, little, a small little problem with uh, a gap in the Bullfrog logo there. Mm. But apart from that, it's okay, right? So, uh, back in the day, uh, I and many, probably many other people were uh, very happy to see such nice, nicely structured example source code. So why am I looking at all of this? Well, you know, just for reminiscing purposes, but I'm also familiarizing myself a little bit with all of the stuff that I've previously forgotten from the Amiga. Um, I think I'm going to try and port my uh, compression tool uh, that I use in my Commodore 64 projects to the Amiga and then to see how well it um, compares to other similar self-extracting XE, you know, compression tools. Uh, there's quite a bit to learn. Uh, I have a feeling that if I want the compressed executable to say, for example, load into uh, upper memory or fast memory, or whatever you want to call it, the non-chip memory, right? And then extract data as hunks into chip memory and optional hunks of memory into fast memory and stuff, then I think it would be optimal to free the compressed data before running the final uh, uncompressed data and that might mean uh, fiddling around with the linked list of blocks actually in memory and stuff like that. There's a quite a lot of demonstration sprites in this, isn't there? That's fantastic. I didn't actually realize there were so many sprites as IFF files and of course directory opus is great at allowing the IFF files to be viewed actually. But yeah, I think um, trying to do self-extracting executables is going to involve some relatively low level hacking around with the uh, memory block link lists and stuff like that. Uh, there's there's probably a bi-directional link list of blocks and types and in, in a heap and stuff like that. So anyway, I'm having a little disassembly line of uh, the power packer uh, self running compressed executable just to see uh, what kind of stuff is going on in there. But um, uh, my compression 
algorithm and stuff that I use for the Commodore 64 in, in that, in my Commodore 64 tooling um, is almost certainly a lot better than what was being used in Power Packer on the Amiga. I mean, I make use of gigabytes of memory for compression tables and stuff, so uh, we should be, we should see much better compression ratios than uh, probably even the better versions of Power Packer that were running natively on the Amiga. And that's because the compression tool for the Commodore 64 side runs on my Windows PC. It runs on a very, very fast PC with gigabytes of memory and tons of hard drive space, so it makes it useful. Oh, look, there's also the mod file for that populous groove or whatever it's called. So anyway, thank you very much for watching these uh, retro games videos where I reminisce about old retro games platforms. If you like this kind of stuff, then please do consider liking or subscribing to my channel. And I hope to catch you around next time. Take care. Have a great day, wherever you are.